So I've just arrived at Beaver Waters for my session and this is the very first time I've even seen this lake. I've just chosen a swim, uh, but I want to find out a little bit more about what's beneath the surface. So I'm going to show you how I go about trying to find some features. So here I have my spod rod. The reel is loaded with my braid and a shock leader. And instead of a spod, I have attached my lead. Now I attach that just with a, with a loop. So I've got a, a loop with a loop tied on the end. So all I do, I pull my loop like that. And it becomes like a quick change. I don't use any quick change links or swivels. So I can change between the lead and the spod really easily. So that's the basic setup that I'm using. And now I'm gonna have a cast around and see what we can find. So I've just cast that about 75, 80 yards. And you'll notice there just before the lead hit the surface, I trapped the line with my fingers on the reel. So just before I hit the surface, I stopped it. The lead went in with a nice little plop and I then felt the lead down all the way down. So I trapped the line and then as the lead was falling through the water, I'm going with it with the rod. I'm following that lead all the way down, remaining in contact with the lead as it's falling through the water until I feel it touch down on the lake bed. So just by doing that, I already know that that's that area in front of me where the lead landed is around 18 to 20 feet deep. Um, it's not an exact uh, science, not like if I was using a marker float, but I've got a good idea of how deep it is. So yes, yeah, about 18, 20 foot. So now I'm just gonna draw the lead back. The lead's already stuck in something. So let's see the, well, it's, yeah, it's, it's pulling free, but with some resistance. So that would tell me that's probably blanket weed. Yeah, the lead is sticking. It's not gliding freely. So that there is an area of weed. It's just pulled out now. Yeah, all that area is quite, quite weedy. So that was my first cast. So even in sort of 18, 20 feet of water, we've got, we've got weed on the bottom. So yeah, that's what the lead was sticking in as I was drawing it back. Really tough, tough blanket weed. So this time I'm going to go a little bit right and a little bit shorter. Oh, that went down nice. Proper bong. Oh yes, that's the one. That's the one. Nice, right. So I just found a nice little gravel area in amongst lots of that blanket weed. So I'll just peel off a little bit more line to where I think that may, that may start. And I just want to cast back on that now with that bare lead, just to double check. So what I found now is a nice uh, gravel area. It's only quite small. I had a few casts either side and also backwards and forwards of the spot. And it's a slightly raised gravel area. Just feeling that lead down, it feels a bit shallower, but not by much, it's probably it's probably sort of 16, 17 feet when around it's sort of 18 to 20. So it is a little bit of a raised area, nice and clean. Uh, all around it is, is that heavy, heavy duty blanket weed. And it happens to be, as I'm looking at the tree line on the far bank, there's a V-shaped dip um, in amongst those trees. So it's an area I'll be able to see. If I have to recast at night, all I've got to do is look at the skyline on the night. I'll be able to see that dip in the trees. Um, but before we do any of that, I have put the line in the clip on the reel. And what I'm going to do now is wrap these around the distance sticks to see what sort of distance it's at. 
That way, when I come to recast at night, all I've got to do is wrap out the rod, get to the mark on the distant sticks, put it in the clip, and bang the rod back out there. So that's how I go about doing my feature finding. And the more you do it, the more you begin to understand more and interpret what is going on when you're feeling that lead down. So you begin to understand how deep the swim is by the amount of time it takes to feel that lead down to the bottom. And when that lead does touch down, you then begin to understand what it's landing on. The, the differences from how, how hard that lead is hitting the bottom, whether it's landing on gravel or clay or silt or weed, you'll begin to learn to interpret those readings better. And by knowing what type of lake bed you're fishing on, that then enables you to form your plan or choose the right tactics based on those lake bed conditions.